Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And today we are back inside because it is pouring rain outside and I had to get this video done because this is one video I think I've gotten DMs, emails about and that is flea beetles. How do we deal with them? What's up with them? And why are they so dang bad this year? Let's get into the details. So I currently am experiencing some minor flea beetle issues in my organic stands of gardens that I do not use conventional fertilizers and things on. And we'll talk about why that is here in a little bit, but flea beetles are these little tiny beetles that you can see that crawl around on your leaves and either leave divots or complete holes through very young immature seeds or leaves. So these could be the cotyledons or these could be the first true leaves. They're particularly attracted to brassicae species. They love radishes and turnips and all things of that nature. So if you have them, they're most likely to be found on those crops before they would be found anywhere else in your garden. So to understand how to battle the darn flea beetle, we have to first understand their life cycle. So flea beetles from an agronomy perspective are mostly found in canola fields. They love to overwinter in the stubble, but when we translate that into our gardens, that means they like to overwinter in our mulch and our plant debris. This includes our compost. So in order to prevent against flea beetles next year, what you want to do is remove the mulch or any plant debris on that soil surface and let mother nature do her work, really get the frost in there and zap down any issues that may be upcoming for the spring. With that being said, our compost piles can be areas in which flea beetles will overwinter especially if we place the mulch that we just removed that fall on that compost and then we don't let it fully compost and cure before then reapplying it to our gardens. So step one, remove any existing debris this fall, especially if you have any signs of flea beetles because it will just amplify over time. And secondly, when using compost, make sure it is thoroughly done compost and there's no sticks, twigs, leaves left in there. And don't let your new compost necessarily mixed with your finished compost just to prevent any transfer of adults, pupae, <laughs> eggs, things of that nature. They also will tend to overwinter in hedges or in areas where there's lots of shelter. Um, so from like a farming perspective, we'll see these in um, windrows, things like that, uh, shelter belts, but that's not really the case here for gardeners unless if you are like a homesteader or an acreage, then those would be the areas you would want to watch out for as well and just make sure to clean out those areas as much as possible. Again, in the fall. Right now, it's a little too late to use that as a mechanism to protect the plants, but I have some other tips and tricks for you. So one really common one we always see is crop covers. So I just did a video on tool. Tool would be a great application in this case. However, if they overwintered in an area slash att attacking a certain area of the garden, then we're kind of SOL and we have to manage the beetles in the area that they are positioned. But if you see them in one part of the garden and they're not in another yet, wrap everything up until the flea beetle has run out of soft tissue. Keep that in mind. They will not attack adult plants. They will only attack cotyledons and seedlings. So that's mostly where we see them. So one really great way to destroy flea beetles is trap and burn. So I talked about companion planting and one of the things I talked about in companion planting is that we typically reference companion planting for insect preventative uh, incorrectly. And so a version of companion planting is trap gardening or trap planting and then we would burn or destroy those plants as the insects come and have fun on it. So if we do a trap garden, we want to do the most delicious, enticing food that they will eat. So again, turnips and radish, that's the ones that they absolutely go crazy for. We want to seed an area really, really dense with this stuff, make it like a little oasis island for them. We're going to wait for them to go into the area to attack, and then we're going to use fire or weeding or pesticides, insecticides, if that's what you're into, vinegar, for example, 
to destroy any flea beetles in that area. And the purpose of this is to cut off not only their food source, but any sort of adults in the area would also be killed off then too. It's not going to totally destroy your flea beetle issue, but it's definitely going to mitigate it and make it more manageable. The second two are more just last ditch efforts. I don't find that these two methods work 110%, especially if you're getting lots of rain. Every time it rains, you gotta go reapply, and that'd be insecticidal soap or insecticidal soap slash cayenne pepper. So all you're gonna do is cayenne pepper in water and then spray it on the leaves for whatever reason insects do not like this stuff or the soap they get stuck in their legs get stuck in that sort of thing do not use dawn dish soap um, in this case because the dawn dish soup soap is a surfactant detergent so it's going to rip off the top of the cuticle layer leaving that plant more exposed to flea beetles so you will kill the flea beetles in that initial area yes but you're making those really tender delicious leaves even more tender and delicious once the threat of dawn dish soap is gone they're just gonna walk right back in there and chew away another method that we can do to make sure it's actually flea beetles because they can be really really tiny is using um a white paper and sticking it underneath the plant giving the leaves a little shake and then seeing what lands on it if we see black beetles well off we have flea beetles the other method would be to use sticky traps of some sort for them to stick to again to help us to identify this does not necessarily mean it's going to reduce or destroy them in any meaningful way and the last two work within reason um diatomaceous earth again is another one that we can dust in the area that we have flea beetles in and fingers crossed we can uh, reapply once the rain flies because it will simply it's like shards of glass to insects it just kind of rips them up a little bit the other one that we can look for is nematodes and i don't know of any brands in particular but if you have any please drop them in the comments down below um nematodes specific to your country area that actually eat the flea beetles and again i know they're nematodes for slugs snails ants thrips mealybugs I mean, the list goes on and on, but I don't know of any specific to the flea beetle. So if you do, please let me know because they do, they're in the soil layer, that's where they reside. So there would have to be some form of a predator out there. I know there's nematode uh, predators out there that eat flea beetles, but are those commercial insects that you can purchase? I'm not sure, but it is a great organic, semi-permanent way to remove those from the system. And the last one isn't so much um, a preventative, nor is it a uh, damaging, it's not gonna damage your flea beetle population by any means, but it's gonna save your plants, and that is to back off on nitrogen fertilizers. Nitrogen fertilizers give you lots of rapid green growth, edible to these guys. So to prevent against that, we wanna back off on that nitrogen fertilizer, whatever possible. And if they completely decimate everything and you're beside yourself, start your seeds, whether it be radishes, turnips, um, you name it, in seed cells, lettuce, for example, start that all in seed cells, and then let them trash the crop that they're on right now. Do the burn method, whether that be with a blog with fire on it, I don't care how you do it, um, or an actual tiger torch, whatever the case is, kill off the flea beetles that exist there currently in the soil in that patch, plant some trap crops directly in the soil, see what comes into the area, burn again, and then I want you to transplant your transplants that you're gonna start right now as well into the soil. So you're not gonna lose any time. You maybe lose two weeks tops, and you will still gain the harvest that you were planning for from those areas without the threat of the flea beetle because once we plant full-blown transplants, those leaves are not nearly as supple. They are not cotyledons, so they're not as nearly as delicious. And so we don't have to stress out as much about the flea beetles having a buffet of our, our dark gardens. The information I give you, I mean, isn't, I know, hunky-dory, but I'm not going to say use this one product and spray it and your flea beetles will be gone because it's just not, it's not how it's gonna work. Um, this is gonna be a process and it's going to take time to get rid of. My organic stand has this because 
one of the organic methods I'm using is mulching and permanent mulching and like a permaculture type method where I'm leaving everything in place and piling and piling and piling on top. Bit me in the butt. After two years, I have flea beetles. So that whole thing is getting managed completely differently this fall. Unfortunately, this year it's too late. So I'm personally just ordered some diatomaceous earth. I'm going to sprinkle that throughout. I'm going to look for some nematodes. If I find any, I will pop some down below with a link. I'm going to spread that through the whole area. And then I'm going to do a couple trap crops and I'm going to use radishes because they're very inexpensive. Um, and I'm just gonna do really dense piles of radishes. I'm going to see what lands on them and then I'm going to tiger torch that trap crop goodbye um, in hopes of saving the crops I have and then I do have some seeds started in the event that I cannot control these dang things which is not out of the realm of possibility so that's all I have for you guys today I definitely want to get this video up because this is one of those things that really affect us in the spring and then it kind of peters off into the fall because either they kill everything and then we're lost or they just kind of disappear because the plants get too big the leaves get too tough etc and so forth i thank you guys for watching be sure to give it this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button sharing is caring so share it with everyone who has flea beetle issues it's a real problem here in saskatchewan or just in canada in general this year unfortunately let me know in the comments down below if you have flea beetles and i'll talk to you guys next time bye